Time is fleeting fast for our kit bash challenge, and our kit bashers are working fast and furious to meet the deadline. This is our last update, so let's begin with Ben Lake. Hey everybody, just thought I'd give you all an update about the uh, creamery. Um, yeah, I decided to make it a creamery after all. Um, it has now been given a name, it is now Dairy Larson, and we'll find out more about that in a little bit. You can see here the original structure details as per the rules. And I've also added a whole bunch of metal structure to the sides. Uh, kind of extended the building a bit. Uh, added one of the windows only uh, horizontally on this side because, I mean, that's what I tend to see on metal buildings. That seems to be a trend. For the most part, this is uh, evergreen parts on the roof. And, of course, this is the original roof chopped down. I'll give you a little bit of a look inside here. Uh, the flooring is kind of an interesting thing to talk about. Uh, very similar to Jenny's, I used a basswood sheet and then just stained that with um, Hunterline weathering mix. I believe that was light brown. For the back, I just used some boxcar red and then filled in the cracks with Robert's brick mortar formula. I believe the original sheet was quarter inch evergreen products uh, tile. And of course, we have the, uh, the far side wall art, hence the name Dairy Larson. And here's what it looks like lit up. I used the same lights that David used. And on the front, I've got two Walther's wall mounted lights. I'm not quite sure how much of the interior I'm gonna complete in time, but right now my main focus is getting the signage done. And then at that point, we'll figure out how far we'll go from there. All right, well, I've got the walls of my station pretty much done here and painted. I still have one of the, the glue joints here is loose. That's on purpose because it'll make it easier for me to put the roof on later. Um, so we have the windows in. Um, I have my freight doors. I wanted something more steam era looking. So these right here, I actually scratch built these by overlaying the garage doors that came with the Walders kit, just with some different strip styrene. And then um, doors that I'd actually ordered came in, so I decided to use those on the, for the end freight doors here. And then the back side, this will be sort of the, the truck loading side of the station. So we have another door, more windows, and a personnel door. Um, and then so what I'm gonna be working on next is the roof. No, this isn't what the final roof's going to look like, but this is the sub-assembly I put together to make the peaked roof. Um, and you can see sort of the guts here. I used the, this tubing to help reinforce the joint, um, which actually worked out really well. Um, also, I, I used this sort of uh, bore, this, this textured styrene to simulate the soffits which is just because I was lazy and didn't want to model open rafters. Um, so once we put this in, this will sort of fit between the walls like that. And then I'm going to cover it with, I have some plastruct textured plastic here to simulate shingles. So we'll get that on. And then I think that'll look pretty good on this. And then I'll, I'll add that along with some other roof details like a vent and a chimney. And then the structure itself should be done. Um, I probably won't get to an interior by the end of the challenge. Um, however, I don't think I'm going to put one in anyway. I have some, some material in here that I've used for bracing that will make pretty good view blocks. Um, what I would probably do is find some sort of prototype photos and glue those in there just to sort of suggest a background. Maybe add some window treatments like a shade or something like that. So overall, this has been a really fun project. and. Um, I think I'm looking forward to seeing it done too. Dane is making great progress on that station. Now one kit bash challenger that we have not heard from yet is Hal Miller. So let's check in and see how Hal's kit bash is coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks Hal. All right, we've got a couple of outside contributors we're going to do some updates from today. I've got Ron Walters, who is a new kit basher, and he's joined the competition here. Um, Ron drives past this building on a regular basis. This is a Budweiser distribution center, and he likes the fact it's got this big, long rail-serve dock with all the beer kegs on it. 
He decided that even though that looks nothing like the state line kit, that he could make some modifications to the kit. You can see here is the beginning of his project with the kit walls kind of taped together in position. But what he's doing is he is adding that large covered dock on one side so that he could make a rail serve beer distribution center. Very similar to something that we did on our Winston-Salem Southbound layout, as a matter of fact. I've got one more kit bash update for you today. This is Mike Pagano's finished end scale kit, his freight house, of which he's got the final photos here of with all of the details on the dock and the signs and the weathering. Mike, you've done a wonderful job on this kit. And you know what? One of the things that I noticed in your photos that I really like is if you take a look at the door that goes between the loading dock and the building, he's even added the scratches into the metal door to make it look like it gets banged around quite a bit with carts and boxes and other things as they haul stuff in and out. So, all right, moving on, we're going to pick up with Jerry Leone and find out what Jerry is working on in his state line project. Well, this is a great time to update you on my state line farm supply project simply because I'm at the end of most of the major stuff and I'm about to start some of the last little uh, details that go on to the building. So let me tell you what I've done so far and then uh, tell you what I'm planning on doing. Well, as you can see, the uh, the uh, grafting of these two facades into one facade worked out pretty darn nice. Um, I wound up by painting the uh, brick surface, as I talked about last time, red. Actually, it's a zinc chromate. Um, and then used a technique that I talked about in my uh, March 2019 Model Railroader article about using hairspray to get this uh, peeling paint on the brick effect. I paint, uh, over painted it white and then used the hairspray on it. I painted all the windows uh, green. I actually wanted to paint them maroon, but I didn't have enough uh, maroon paint. Uh, I painted the cinder blocks on the sides and the back a, uh, a medium gray, and then I went in and I added uh, random little bricks. If you can see those here, uh, I changed the color of the gray paint. It was like 40 drops of gray paint to one drop of black, just to get this slightly darker gray color, um, and added them to random bricks. Added it to random bricks on all three sides, and it kind of gives the wall a little bit more dimension. I think um, I painted uh, all of the windowsills a uh, concrete color. The uh, the backside here. Uh, uh, you can see these are the Grantline windows that I talked about last time. Those worked out really, really well. Um, as you can see, I did indeed make this little loading area out of uh, the spare uh, front walls or back walls, whatever they were that came with the kit, uh, and then did indeed block up those windows with uh, with brick and use that hairspray uh, technique once again. I had some spare uh, roofing type material in my uh, scrap box and used that along with a smoke jack. Um, the I decided to go with the flat roof simply because uh, it suddenly dawned on me that a two-story cinder block building having a curved roof on it, the stresses on the outside walls may uh, cause may have caused the walls to just kind of, you know, uh, uh, fall out sideways. So I went with this flat roof, but I'll be adding a lot of, um, you know, vents and sort of uh, and details just to, to, you know, spice it up a little bit and give a little bit more uh, visual interest. I also wound up by looking at the back side of this facade, and this the back side of this is facade is probably 15 feet tall, and it would it would be brick. So I wound up by uh, using some channel and some I beam to build a little support for it that'll get mounted on there. I, the, the roof is not mounted on yet either because I may want to do some internal lighting. Um, but that will get mounted on here and that would, you know, certainly hold that brick facade up, uh, you know, in, in a high wind or something like that. I was going to put shadow boxes in the windows. I again envision this as being a retail uh, uh, store now, but given the number of windows in this building, I would probably be building shadow boxes for the next decade. So I decided to skip that, but I am going to do some downspouts and maybe some scuppers for the downspouts on, on the side and back walls. Certainly I have to build a sign for the front of the establishment here and I'll, I'll be doing that. 
and then probably last I'll be doing um, some weathering on the on the kit. I did some experimental weathering back here, and it and I like the way it looks, so I'll, I'll probably be doing that. The other thing is, is I ran out of picture windows, if you will, uh, and wound up by finding one in my scrap box because again I have two of these kits on my layout, and apparently I didn't use one of those windows. Uh, but but that also meant that I had to scratch build the little brick portion that goes underneath the window and I again used some of the bricks that were left over from some of the parts that I cut out of the facade uh, to make that thing. Anyway, so that's where I am right now and I've got to keep cranking on this because I've got a deadline in front of me. Well things are coming along slowly but surely on my state line farm supply building. As you may recall, I'm doing a version of the Richfield, Wisconsin uh, Department of Public Works building here, their little village building. So this is my compressed version of it. I've got it in primer now. I've got the floor painted concrete and it's already masked. And I've got some paint on the ends of the uh, inside of the ends here as well. Now while I've been working on other parts of the building, I've also spent some time working on a little shadow box here. Now when I was driving by the building one morning, I happened to see the interior, which was a block wall that runs north and south. So I fashioned that out of some brick material from the N-Scale Architect, and then I just used some styrene for the rest of it, and a couple of angle brackets here from City Classics. So how I envision this working is that the shadow box is just going to drop in. You'll see a little bit of the block wall here, and then we'll just put a vehicle and some details inside to give the impression that there's a lot more going on inside the building. The other part of the equation I wanted to work on was the roof and specifically this little piece right here which I believe is a snow dam so that snow doesn't just go sliding off the roof down the side of the building and potentially onto employees using this rear access door. What I found is a part from CalScale number 190-481 and these are pipe hangers for steam locomotives. Now I'm going to have to modify these a bit and that's kind of my next big project is figuring out how to get the right angle so these are standing vertical and then I'll just thread some 20 thousandths brass wire through the three openings that'll give me the three pipes just like on the prototype and we'll be set to go. So things are starting to take shape nicely I just have more paint to put on the building get those pipe brackets added to the roof throw some details inside glue it all together and we'll call this project done. Well, Jerry and Cody are making great progress, but that's a good thing because we've only got two weeks left until our State Line Kit Bash Challenge is complete. And then it's time to show the finished models. So check back in a couple of weeks to see what those finished models look like. Remember, if you're playing at home, you can post your photos of your Kit Bash to our Facebook page or to the MR Video Plus Instagram page and make sure you hashtag State Line Kit Bash so we can see what you've been up to. All right, it's off to the finish line next.